guys, I'm Amy, and you've landed on Bella's Bargains. That's my cow, Effingham, and sometimes he co-hosts with me. He's got a lot to say. This channel is Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree, and only Dollar Tree. And why? Because everything at the Dollar Tree is a dollar and a quarter, people. So stick around, consider subscribing, and don't forget to give me that big thumbs up. And if you want to know more about the four uploads I do every week, just check out the description box for more information. Enjoy! What would you do if I sang out of tune? Would you stand up and walk out on me? Lend me your ears and I'll sing you a song And I'll try not to sing out of key Oh, I get by with a little help from my friends Yeah, I get high with a little help from my friends Well, do you need anybody? I want somebody to love Well, could it be? Hi guys, welcome to Bell's Bargains. My name is Amy. All right, so that's like this song I have to sing every month when I do this challenge, which is what would you make? What would you do if I sang out a tune? All right, so let's talk about this challenge today. So if you're new to the chat, if you're new to the channel, you should know I oh, start every video with a song. And also, I um, I am a Dollar Tree channel, so like everything I do is Dollar Tree, 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 all Dollar Tree, and occasionally thrift store for a thrift flip. All right, um, so today in the What Would You Make challenge, so here we go. It's our host uh, Brenda from Rustic and Lace DIY DIY Craftaholic, and the co-host is the Showin's Nest. I think that's how you say it. I've watched her channel. But it's so funny, like, I didn't really think about how do I pronounce that until, like, like, hmm. But I, I'm pretty sure it's the Showin's, the Showin's Nest. Anyway, all three great channels. They'll be linked down below. So, you know, these challenges are so much fun, and I'm doing so many of them right now. And it really is a craft community here on YouTube. There's just, like, a nice group of ladies, occasionally a guy. And um, anyway, it's just fun. Okay, so let's see. So today it's what would you make? I'm super happy with my three crafts that I made today. The playlist will be linked down below also, so make sure you go check that out. So I'm gonna start with the smallest to the largest. All right, so the first one is, now I'm calling this a candle holder. Um, you know, I don't know about you, but sometimes something like this, I'm like, oh, like I get worried just putting it onto, say a wood surface like this, right? So I always want to put it on something. So this is just a nice little, it's a candle coaster. That's what it is. A candle, did I just coin a phrase? A candle coaster. I think I did. I think I could sell these. Okay, anyway, candle coaster. So what would you make is obviously we have, as I put it on the wood, we have to use wood. So these are, well, check this out. Why don't I just show you how I made it? Watch this. fairly simple that's the package of the little squares that come in a square and the cork board with the self adhesive on the back so I'm just putting it over it to get basic close enough to the shape peel it off and then I'm just gonna start putting all those squares on there so they're a little wonky because they're not like all exactly the same size but um, in some cases like I would move them a little bit trying to get like the edge pretty much as straight as I could and um, then it's going to, I don't know, it's not bad, actually. It's, like I said, it's kind of primitive. And see, I'll move some of them just to try and get them to line up as best I can. So some are bigger, some are smaller. Anyway, so whatever. Once you get all of that on and just pressed into that cork, which is really great, I can't leave it just the cork to keep it all adhered together. I need to um, adhere it together some other way. So once I get all of them on there... I'm going to take wood glue. Oh, right here at the end, though, you'll see, like, I move one, move it over there, move them around. Again, I'm trying to get the sides as straight as I could, and I knew there was going to be some gaps in the center of it, but that's, you know, that was okay. Okay. Anyway, so now I'm going to take wood glue and squirt it all over the top of it. I have not trimmed off the cork yet. I just left the cork, right? And so I'm going to take a brush, and I'm just really brushing it into all of the crevices, just like if I was doing caulk with tile, 
Um, I'm just trying to fill in those gaps with wood glue. And then I'm going to take a baby wipe once I have it all on there because I don't really want to cover the whole tops of these. I just wanted the crevices to be glued. So I'm going to take baby wipes and wipe the glue off the top of the squares. Pretty simple. I think, it took, I think I used two wipes, maybe just one. Um, clean off my brush. No, I did two. And then I let it sit and dry for a while. And somehow I did not film, but I trimmed off the cork. I used my little straight blade there and did it. Then sanding along the edges just to any, you know, little extra pieces of cork or something. So just sand it a little bit. And then here we've got the transfer. So I'm just taking it out. I'm going to flip it over. I lined up my design kind of where I wanted it. Flipped it over, traced it, cut it out. And then we're just going to rub it on. So it takes a little bit to rub it on because you do have some unequal or unlevel bits in here, but that doesn't really matter. You just take your time. So it took a little bit, but just rub and kept checking and checking and checking. Eventually, I get it all on there. And then after I do that, do I cover it with Mod Podge next or do I paint the sides? I think I covered it with Mod Podge first because I wasn't going to paint the sides and then um, decided to. So I get this all on there and then I take Mod Podge, just matte Mod Podge and I paint the whole top of it and again I'm sort of feeling in the crevices a little bit so not um, just you know just to sort of help seal it and then I'm gonna take the paint and paint the sides and this thing is gonna be done and I sort of watered down the paint a little bit too didn't want like a super thick covering so there you go So super simple, right? So using that that sticky cork was just fantastic, right? Because that just made it so easy to put them all on there. And I was not going for perfection. I really wanted what I ended up with here, which is almost like a, um, I don't know, um, primitive kind of, because of course those blocks aren't all the same size, like by no means. So you're gonna have some unevenness and whatnot, but I just think this came out so cute. I love this rub on, I've been wanting to use it. This was the perfect thing. All of my DIYs, my three DIYs today sort of match. They sort of go together well. So you'll see this color pop up again. And um, it's just, I love this. It's a candle coaster. Have you ever? No, I think I just coined the phrase. It's a candle coaster. Now I'm gonna make more of them. I'm gonna make more candle coasters. It's like a great gift idea too, right? Make something like that and throw it in with your candles. And then on the back of this, like as a gift on the back, you could literally take a Sharpie and write a message, right? So I love my candle coaster. I think it's super cool and I will use it. All right, the next one is, this is just to die for, tear tray adorbs, okay? So this is, you guys see these on the wall. They like hang them, the succulents growing on a wall thing. And I was like, I'm glue strings. I swear I dream about glue strings. Anybody else? Okay, so I think this is so cute. It's like a tear tray little succulent wall hanging thing, but it sits like it just it just sits like this. Let me show you how I made this one. And these are those wood boxes, like the tic-tac-toe boxes that have all the little wood cutouts in them. I bought a case, or no, Mickey from Minnesota Mickey sent me a case of those like probably two years ago. And so I have all of the boxes, and then of course the ones that I've purchased on my own that were different patterns. So I have all these boxes, I'm always trying to figure out ways to use them. So every, like, what would I make? I'm like, oh, can I use some of those? Because they're wood. So let me show you how I made this. the two boxes and all my succulents that I'm going to size down. I start to put the wood glue on there and then realize I go, oh, crud, I've got to take the back off of one of these boxes because I need it to be deeper than just one box depth. Um, and so I, this is a little struggle bus here and I left it in just so you guys could see, but they're not always. I mean, some of them come off easier than others. It's just like any other thing that we buy at the Dollar Tree. Sometimes it disassembles super easy and sometimes it takes a little work. This one 
for some reason took a little work. So I go through everything and then it'd been a while since I've disassembled one and after I'm like pushing and prying and pulling and break off a corner, I'm like, oh yeah, I need to score it with my crafter's knife. So I do that. I lay it down and get the knife and my utility blade thing and score it and then that helps. And then once I get that out of there, of course the center section comes apart and then it's like a puzzle. I got to get it back together. So it's like, okay, whatever. So I do. And then I pop it back into its square, making sure that I had all the pieces going the right way because this is going to be the top section of it that you're going to see. And then I, boom, let's glue it all together. And there was a slight gap on the one side because nothing ever matches up perfectly. So I threw some wood glue in there to make sure that it was going to be okay. And I put something heavy on it and let it dry for a couple hours. Then I got my furniture markers and I took that little corner piece that I'd ripped off and colored on them because then that was going to tell me what it was going to look like. And so I do it again because I'm like, um, they're so close actually in color. There's a slight variation, like one's a little more brown, one's a little more red. And I think I end up using mahogany. Uh, well, anyway, you could do the same thing, decide which color you want. So then I start um, just using the markers. So the furniture markers are great, especially for a project of this size. I had to go get a new marker. Um, because, you know, pulling out stain and all that, and it just gets messy and it stinks and blah. Furniture markers are great. So I go ahead and do all of that. And then I marker the very top of our tic-tac-toe grid, so to speak. And that's because I'm going to paint the inside of these squares because uh, it would have taken a lot of work to get them stained in there and I wanted there to be a variation in color. Now in the end you don't really see the green that I paint those inside of those squares with um, because I end up putting the um, coconut liner in there so maybe you don't need to paint the squares if you're going to copy this but I just feel like it's probably popping through somewhere and the, the light color of this wood was going to be too light I didn't want that popping through. And it really wasn't that hard to paint the inside. By the way, this is the same green that I made. You'll see on the final project. I just showed you these in a different order than I made them, if that makes sense. So I made the mushroom house first, and that's where I mixed up this green. So the green got used in all three projects. Because it was also the green that I used on the side of my candle coaster. All right, so it's all painted. It's all dried. Now I'm going to get out my coconut liner and I've already put little like bird's nest pieces inside of each one and see you really don't see the green but I guess you do kind of on the sides so put those all in glue all those in and then I'm gonna go to the succulents and I'm just gonna have to cut some of them down because most succulents are a little bit bigger than this so some of them are the right size but I just would uh, cut off the portion that I needed to make it the size that I wanted I kept all those bits of succulents because I will use them in some other thing. You know, maybe I'll have a succulent popping out from behind something, so I wouldn't need a whole one. I don't know. Anyway, so my goal was to get a different succulent in every box. I did achieve that. There happens to be one that is the same one, but it's a different color. This one, I had to pull it off its own spine, so I have to glue it back together. That's okay. We don't care. And then I just cut a little piece of the spine off to put in the center. So I did end up getting nine different little succulents. Did you know there was that many at Dollar Tree? Some of them I pulled out of the magnetic little succulent holders. Some of them were the cute little um, miniature pots that said, you know, I leaf you or they had cute little sayings on them. Nonetheless, I found nine different ones. So once I get them all in there, and then I just go back and I glue them. Those are the little magnet ones right there that you can see in the screen. That's one of the magnet ones. So I think this is so cute. And like I said, on the back side, maybe I should um, put some of that rub on transfer. It would look really cute. I probably will go back and do that if I put this on a tear tray. But right now I'm just putting it on my shelf. And oh my gosh, it's so cute. Okay, so I'm just going to glue all these in. Once I get them in there, and there I was just looking at the coloring to make sure that I didn't have one that, and I wanted to make sure it was as different a green as I could possibly get, which I did. So there you go. You can watch me glue these on, and voila, this thing is done. And we'll go on to the next.
project. this one and that I mean some of them come off easy and some of them don't it doesn't matter how cool is this and then there I sort of used that that same green and then sort of whitewash the back I was literally and I may still I was thinking about using this transfer to put it on the back so when it was on a tear tray I probably will I probably should have done it for today anyway um I just yeah okay let me put my candle coaster back so just so it would be double-sided for a tear tray. But how cute, oh, I know why I didn't, because I'm not putting it on a tear tray, maybe at some point, but you certainly could. I was just putting it in my living room. Anyway, I live in Arizona, so cactus and succulents, it's about the only thing that lives here. Apparently I'm a sucker. Mm. Anyway, so um, I, yeah, I love this. I showed it to Marcus, he goes, yeah, I don't, I don't understand it. I don't, he doesn't understand why people would hang succulents on the wall. I go, it's a design choice, design choice. All right, and then the final one, which I can't decide which one of these is my favorite. That's how much I like the stuff that I made today. So let me take the candle off of this. This is, he called it a mushroom house, Marcus did. It's like, okay. But let's just talk about this for a minute. It's sort of a riser. Look at the design on the top with the mushrooms. This is a wax melt, which I hauled not that long ago, and I said it totally looks like wood. And so, oh my gosh, there's a couple of surprises in this whole put together. So watch how I made this one. Here's those two signs they're definitely from Easter and at first I was gonna try and take the wood pieces off but I was like eh, don't really need to and they're not gonna come off in a whole piece anyway so <clears throat> I just left them on there and then I'm going to take some wood glue and we're just gonna go on top of every one of those half rounds just a little dot of wood glue so the tricky part is gonna be when I line it up after I get that wood glue on because I need the tops to match, right? Otherwise, they would fall into the crevice and it, it wouldn't glue with the look that I want. So, just going to put it in there, lining up those holes for the hanger, and then just very carefully, boom, boom. Yep, and I just sort of check it, make sure it's on there evenly, and then put some heavy weight on it and leave it dry for a couple hours. Then, once it's dry, this is the light wall spackling, and I'm going to put my little scraper thing behind there, put some in, just to fill that hole in. I don't want to see that hole. In the end, I realized I could have covered it with a mushroom, but yeah, it, whatever. Here's what I did. <laughs> so, <clears throat> then I'm going to take, I took three and four and little pieces of the wood pieces. I glued them together somehow. I didn't film that. But you, you've seen me do it before where I just glue little wood pieces together to make a three-dimensional piece out of the wood pieces. So it gave me some three-dimensional mushrooms to put inside my little mushroom village here. 
So, or mushroom cave, I guess. And then that's the coconut lining that I'm putting inside of there. Of course, part of this is the coloring. Look at that coloring is so perfect with our candle melter color. And I like the coconut lining because it doesn't leave Spanish moss. You just leave a mess everywhere. So now I'm going to take this rub on transfer from the Dollar Tree. There was a wreath in the middle of it that I used on something else, just to give you clarification of which one it is. And I'm going to go around this whole candle melter putting these greenery pieces on. So, you know, the color of this little candle melter is going to match perfectly with how I stain the top portion. So these are going to look the same on this. Look, it looks so cute as they will on the riser portion of it. That's one of those rocks that has a word, I think it said love or faith or something on the other side. I just glued it word down. And now I'm going to add some actual greenery. This is one of those vines from Dollar Tree. I just love the coloring of this one. And then I use a little bit of what might be their boxwood, I think. I'm not sure. Um, they just, most of them just say greenery. So you just choose by the look that you like. But I was trying to match the rub-on transfers. It was sort of a boxwood and then a fern-like were the what the rub-on transfers look like. So I picked two greens that sort of match that. It's in the details, I always say, right? It's the little details like that that make a project more pleasing to the eye because everything's cohesive. And once I get that settled in there, and I like how much greenery I have in there, I didn't overdo it. Like, remember, don't overdo. We crafters can overdo, so remember to try not to. I'm going to take this little piece of, see, it's like, I don't know. Is it boxwood? Somebody tell me. I don't know my greens. <laughs> so I'm not sure. But just a touch of that. And it's looking really good. Now I'm going to add my mushrooms in. See that one? I think it's five pieces all put together to make it three-dimensional. So that one's going to go in the front. I'm going to put one on the rock. The reason for adding the rock was to add some height differences inside of this little piece. And also another natural element in a rock. So we're going to put one um, on next to the rock, one on the rock, and one towards the back of this little, what's it called? What are the box things called that we make in school that you pan pan a, that you make a scene inside the box? Anyway, it's kind of like that, a miniature one of those. So, um, I had to use my scissors to get that one to the back there. Actually, needle nose, just to get it into the spot that I wanted it. Add more glue. Glue that down. And then our bottom portion is done on our little riser here, our little mushroom house riser. And we're going to go back and just take a look at that in the inside. Look at how cool that looks. <coughs> Excuse me, you guys. Now, shoe polish. Lorraine, thank you so much. Here's my shoe polish. So, um, at first, I cut a piece out. This is what I showed you on the bottom. Um, I cut a piece and put it down because I was thinking that I was going to need to put them down before I put the shoe polish on because sometimes you can't do rub-ons when you do a stain. But then I stained over this to see what it looked like. And then I realized, no, 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 no. This is shoe polish. It's not like a like a oily stain. So I'm like, it'll be fine. So, and then I realized that I hadn't started where the hole was, which was what I wanted to do to cover up the spot where the hole was. Even though I filled it in, you can still see it, right? So I'm like, never mind. I'm just going to make this the bottom. And then I flip it over and go to the top after I stain the whole thing. So on this, I stain the top and the bottom and the edges, but I don't stain the beads because... I'm going to paint those. I'm going to throw in an accent color in there. If you just wanted to stain it, you could certainly do that before you glued the two together because it would be way easier, obviously, staining it right now. But your advantage in doing it this way is that I'm gluing wood on wood with no, no medium in between, separating the wood from the wood. So it holds better, but there's so many holding spots on this that I think you would be fine to paint it or stain it if you wanted to do that prior to putting it together. Honestly, I didn't think about it before I glued it. 
Had I, I might have painted it beforehand. But anyway, it all works out for me because often I'm creating while I'm creating. So I don't know what the end result is. I'm just I'm building it as I go. And this project was definitely that. I was not sure exactly what I was doing. I just pulled my elements that I thought I was going to use, had a sort of an idea, and then I start building it. So that's why sometimes there's steps that would make it easier, but I didn't know I was going to do that step or that you know, I didn't know I was going to paint the half beads with the green. So now I'm putting all these rub-on transfers here, and I've got three of the mushrooms that are not glued together. They're just one piece because I don't need them to be three-dimensional. I'm going to glue them to the top of this again so that we're of the, all the elements are the same. We've got mushrooms, we've got the greenery, and we're just going to glue one down on each one. So I cut one of them slightly so it could just be sort of growing behind it. So I cut the stem a little bit, and then it looks like it's growing behind it. Sorry, you didn't get a good look at it there. All right, now I'm going to make my green to go around. So I took a dark green, and I took a lighter green, and I'm trying to get the right shade of green. And once I get that, I'm going to take some white and add it in to lighten the shade so that it is the... I guess I'm getting the right color and then I'm going to lighten the shade is the correct way to say it um, because I want it to match the greenery color of the rub-ons again so that it all goes together well. So once I've got it mixed to the right and I'm using I put a little bit of the I think that's a blue it is a blue that's the I was doing my patriotic crafts that day as well and so that was like a navy blue because this green definitely had some blue in it and once I've got it to the right shade, adding the white to the right, right color, adding the white to lighten the shade. And now I'm going to go around and paint um, tediously. See that? It was a perfect match inside here. So obviously, I'm painting into the middle of it in between the beads. But you can't tell that it's not painted all the way through and through. And you certainly can't see the tulip and the rabbit that are the wood pieces that were glued on there. You just can't see any of that. So this... This works really well. Okay, so you don't need to watch me paint the whole thing, but I do go around and paint all those beads and then let that dry. So there you go. Too much painting. That's okay. It's going to go away here in a second. <laughs> and I just did one coat. It didn't need more than one coat. So now we're going to glue it. And um, I'm putting the cement glue down and just a tiny dab of the... Uh, white glue and I didn't show it but I had measured and drawn a template of where to lay it so I knew it was in the middle. Now I have this little gap where the um, there were no beads because that's where the tie-on for hanging it up is and of course this is now at the base of my mushrooms that are on the top part and so again this ties everything together. Throw a little greenery on the top of the lid which then matches our little house of mushrooms on the bottom and then this thing is done, and I'm in love with it. It's so beautiful. I This is my absolute favorite. I hope you guys like it as well. It took a little bit longer, but so worth it. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece. Tell me what you think. But using the ones that already have the half rounds on them, I think brilliant personally. It's just me. I think that's brilliant. So, but how cute is this? So this little area right here, there wasn't the half rounds because that's where the string, you know, the, 
the hanger was. So just to incorporate following our greenery and how about I love, and I do this a lot, you guys, so I hope you, like I take those little wood cutouts and I pile them up to make them a chunkier and then it's like, you can use like a piece versus, but like I just used one here. I love this. Oh, Lorraine, Lorraine, I used the shoe polish. The first project with the new shoe polish that Lorraine sent me. For those of you who don't know, I love to stain with shoe polish. It's so, cause it's not messy. And I bought shoe polish at uh, Dollar Tree probably three years ago. And I bought a bunch and I think it was one of those random items that came in and I can't find it anymore. So I did a shout out to all my besties. I need shoe polish and Lorraine went to Dollar General and got me some shoe polish. So I guess that's not technically from Dollar Tree, but it's still owned by Dollar Tree or is Dollar General owns Dollar Tree. I don't know, whichever way it is. Anyway, so Lorraine, look at that. I love the color of that shoe polish. That's the brown one. Anyway, did this not come up? Oh, so... Did I leave this out of the video? At first I started to put this on and I stained over it because I or wasn't sure and I was like, wait, it's not stained. I'll be able to do the rub-ons afterwards. So, but it doesn't matter. It's kind of cute under there. It's like a little peekaboo design thing. Okay, so isn't this adorbs? What a great way to use the little wax melters that aren't, that's not for a wax melter. It was just to create this little scene. I'm in love with that. I think it's so cute. And of course you can style it like I stuck a candle up on it, right? But you could style that with, heck, you could use it on a buffet table and put a plate on top of it with cookies or something on it. There's lots of, I, there's lots of ideas and stuff, but it's just so cute all on its own. I'm in love with that piece. All right, so what did you guys think about? What would you make? What would you do if I sang out of tune? As I get older, it might happen more. All right. So let's go back and thank these three lovely hosts. So that's Rustic and Lace DIY, The Show Wins Nest, and DIY Craftaholic. Again, their channels will be linked down below in my description box, as well as the play playlist. And I gotta say, so this is one of my favorite challenges, the what would you make? There's what would you make, there's also the five for under five, and then the thrift flips. Those are my th three favorite. Now I do other ones like, um, you know, like, this week I did, um, what did I do this week? I did the wreath one. Did you guys see my dragonfly wreath? <laughs> I thought it was very clever. And then um, I did Hello Summer, Patriotic, and now the What Would You Make? So I'm just like filling up my schedule with challenges. All right, everybody. So listen, if you like anything you saw today, remember to give me a thumbs up or you can hit your right onto the next video, which will be showing up here soon on the screen. And also please leave a comment down below which one of yours is your favorite. I mean, Candle Coaster. Mmm, candle coaster. Y'all gonna be making them now. All right, or was it the mushroom house or is it my succulent wall? You know, a little miniature succulent wall. Okay, I love all these. I think they came out great. So thanks so much for watching everybody. And if you like me, I mean, if you really like me, <laughs> hit that subscribe button. All right, but for now, everybody have a great day, a great week and a great life. And as always, from your singing crafty crafter, what would I do if they closed my DT? Would I stand up and fall to my knees? Where would I go to buy all my craft needs? Walmart is not gonna know. <laughs> Never be Walmart. All right, everybody. Um, that's it. So thanks for watching so much, besties. We'll see you next time here on Bella's Bargains. Thanks for watching. Toodles.